Did you find it? You're live now? Yeah, you gotta go live. Yeah, now it's live. Yeah. Now it's live. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. So we are definitely live right now. Well, let's see uh, who is uh, actually joining us. Love to uh, see if anyone is watching. If anyone is watching us, can you guys hear us? Yeah. So we gotta ask. Uh, Reza, can you go to YouTube and see a comment from your account? Oh uh, yeah. Oh Milo yeah, Milad. Sup, hey, what's up, man? Uh, you guys, how's the how's the sound quality, guys? We want to start. Dominic uh, Fariha. Is is the audio good? Can you guys tell us? Let us know if the audio is good. You can hear us. Give us a thumbs up. It's the first time we're bringing this back after quite a while. So, hey, Vinci. Mariso. Seems like it's good. Awesome guys, thank you so much. So if the quality of the sound is good, we want to start the new live stream that you used to do uh, for market close. And uh, so now we'd love to actually have that uh, one more time again. Uh, thank you for your support. Obviously at the beginning, we're gonna have some uh, issues with the sound quality and everything. But uh, I'm ex excited actually because there's so many things happening in the market oh, and yeah. having this live stream is, uh, is a good way to go through that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think live stream is the best one because you can get the content, you can put it out, no editing. It's right, right, you know, fresh from the press, really. Yeah, fresh from the um, press. Yeah. yeah, and we got this amazing studio. As you can see, like the lighting is really good. The sound quality is a, a little good. And we're really excited. There's tons to talk about. And uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. So, uh, what's the style of the new style of this uh, live stream that we want to do, Ali? So we want to do this um, few hours after the close because we want to compile all the information, right? We want this show to be a really good show with lots of useful uh, information for you guys. But at the same time, we do realize it's the time people have finished trading, they have finished their full-time job. So we want it to be fun, light educational so our goal is really uh what is that word called edutainment like entertainment and education yeah. mixed together yeah <laughs> we want this show to be like that yeah. that's that's the way to do that and anyone who's actually joining us thank you for your support uh if you uh, you know miss the live stream you can uh, still watch it because the, the content is kind of fairly relevant and we try to bring a lot of useful material for you but the the first part is if you show add is the screen right now is that actually we want to start with some uh, fun stuff that might not necessarily be uh, market you know, related. Market related. Yeah. 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 So, um, Santiago, if you can show the screen now for the people, it would be very nice for see to see some of the things that happens. Uh, uh, very nice. Uh, we are showing, we are showing the, the screen now of Ardi, now the now the screen you have. No, that's okay. That's but okay. It, yeah, but I don't see that good. actually right now in the screen of it Ardi. Might, it might be delayed. Your your feet might be delayed. They might be getting there. No, no? I haven't just your like a uh, desk of a screen. Ah, uh, okay. It's like differently like you have. Yeah. So now it actually came, but it's actually showing uh, the the wrong uh, the wrong uh, thing. So disconnect it. Disconnect. Yeah. Disconnect that one. Uh, just yeah. Take out the HDMI. It's okay. Show it again. Show add his uh, uh, screen again. Now now it's it's the correct. Yeah. Show it now again. Now it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, <laughs> this is a live show. So, so this is the first one. We're going to yeah, practice. Yeah, and there's not a lot of people. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sorry about uh, some of the things. So the first one is actually something that happened today in the Congress. Yeah. And uh, uh, MTG, Marjorie Taylor Greene, brought mm -hmm. a picture of uh, Hunter Biden. She's a Republican. She's a Republican. She's Ooh. a very, very extreme right Republican. Uh, uh, and what, what, uh, what kind of what's, uh, what's her county? What, what area she's? What's Actually, I don't know where, uh, uh, where she's from. Actually, let me quickly. Uh, uh, yes, she's from Alaska. I might actually be wrong about it, but she is the representative from uh, Georgia, actually. Georgia, okay. Yeah, so she's a Republican so from Georgia. So Georgia, we know it's a swing state oh, right, as well, right? It has been a swing state yeah. uh, recently, but uh, traditionally is, uh, is a red state. But red she's state. very, very far to the right, right. and she's a very, very big uh, Trump supporter. And obviously, the way that she's talking and the way that she's acting in a political scene is very, very 
uh, interesting and very uh, very so uh, what's the story behind this Andrew take us there what so she I brought this this picture what's significant about this picture I think they say that in the picture if you bring the picture right now Santiago uh, so yeah. it actually in the picture they say that uh, the Hunter Biden paid a lot of money to prostitutes to create yeah. sex videotapes and of course this is a political theater to yeah. hit each other the politicals and uh, and uh, essentially they said that these are the same Democrats that want this material in our kids school because there's a lot of discussions about putting the gay and LGBT into uh, uh, the curriculum, in the of, curriculum the of the schools yeah. uh, so that's that's the kind of political attacks that they're doing on each other and it's you know kind of both parties doing it in different uh, you know different elements. ways but this yeah. is just the funny part I and mean, we're not taking any uh, side but that's actually very uh, very interesting to see that so what is the story of uh, Hunter Biden to be honest with you I don't know but I know that uh, he had the cocaine uh, issue before and there are some uh, allegation of corruption in Ukraine yeah. and you know connection to the uh, you know energy companies in Ukraine yeah uh, again, we don't want to get into that because it's a very sensitive topic. Yeah. I don't know if they're true or not, uh, uh, but uh, th you know they use Hunter Biden against Joe Biden, President Biden yeah. a lot. Yeah, for um, sure. And one of the things I noticed, I mean, again, before without getting too political here, is, and it has nothing to do with politics, but like sometimes you have to earn success. You see these in these scenarios where like your dad is very successful, or uh, you know you have so much. Uh, like you have so much connections and nepotism you end up really screwing things up so yeah. it just seems to me this seems like he was given a, a bunch of opportunities because of his dad was in politics bunch of contracts and he really went south right that, that's possible like if i know i'm dealing with the you know a very a vice president's son mm -hmm. i might give him favor that even if he's not asking for yeah like if i i know that he has such such an influence in washington i might you know do some deals with uh, that person so yeah, doesn't sure. necessarily mean that he is guilty of taking those deals and stuff but uh when you are connected to the you know center of the power yeah definitely you know you might get some uh, even unrequested advantage you know i see this in my life as well like i'm ceo of trading terminal because my brother is <laughs> 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 yeah, that's also that's also very true so let's go to the let's go to the next slide uh this was a fascinating fact that i saw uh jim bianco um posted this by the way Jim Bianco on Twitter he's a he's an amazing follow so if you can follow him definitely give him a follow there is now more NBA players making 30 million a year than there is S&P 500 CEOs making 30 million a year so that's a that's a very good point how many NBA players do we have the professional one how many teams do we have for uh, around 450 so we have 30 teams each team has a 15 people rotation so so 450 Four, player yeah and it look kind of similar to 500 the ceo of s&p 500. 500 there are yeah. more nba player that making 30 million dollar more yeah. just from their contract uh, on uh, for the team yeah. that s&p 500. and then one of the really interesting things is we offer here we often hear greed when it comes to ceos oh like they're getting paid too much and the greedflation and all this stuff but we never hear people arguing hey athletes are getting paid too much what the hell is this right but yeah i think bernie sanders is one of the pe uh, people who really advocate for the lower salaries yeah but uh you know as you said it's actually very interesting and here's another interesting thing is that the white collar jobs like the ceo of the companies yeah uh doesn't necessarily mean that they're that amazing anymore like you know these athletes they make uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. even from the other contracts and now you know uh, yeah. Other promotional contracts or advertisements. Oh, that for making. sure. So the thirty million is just is just how much they're making on uh, in their in their contract. So much off off brand deals that they have on the side, that makes them a lot of like LeBron James. His deal with Nike is worth a billion dollar over his lifetime. A yeah. billion dollar. Or right, I saw right. the movie about uh, Michael, uh, Michael Jordan, Jordan yeah. and the, the deal with the Nike. Yeah. He's a billionaire now, yeah. and then how he's making money. I think Cristiano Ronaldo, the soccer player, the football player. He made a hundred million dollar like in one of the years, and it was only twelve million dollars was actually in that year came from his contract with, uh, I think in that time it was in Manchester. Yeah. So the rest was actually from the promotional deals and advertisements and endorsements that he's doing. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. Uh, um, 
definitely if you can <laughs> go become a <laughs> NBA player right yeah so this is a different path I mean, we grew up uh, as someone that you have to go through the white collar jobs yeah. but you know it seems that there are so many tr- other traditional so many. ways Absolutely. let's move on to the next uh, topic that we are having next topic so this is uh, another funny one that would really gets us to the to the market <laughs> it says how did you make so much money investing that the dad says I can't read a balance sheet the kid says fucking legend uh, yeah, what was that? What is it? Is it a joke? It's a joke. So uh, if you are in the YouTube, you're watching the stream, you probably should be able to see my screen uh, and see what I'm sharing. Yeah, so that's the fundamentals there. So the market is going up. Yeah. Market yeah. is trading expensive. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people who are fundamentally looking at the, the valuation of the companies yeah. are going nuts. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, says that hey, you're a fucking legend because you, you can't read a balance you sheet. You can't read the balance sheet. Yeah. So yeah. we had a guest that I, we actually, both of us have really good respect for him. Yeah. Michael Gayat. Yeah. You know, we've been on the show before and he has a lot of followers. Yeah. He has the ETF and, you know, he published papers. Yeah. He's very bearish and he thinks this is a, you know, kind of a bubble and, uh, you know, this is the bear market is not over yet. Yeah. Uh, is he based on the fundamentals yes uh i think what michael gayet is saying and i think there's some merits to it is he's he's basically his thing is there's a credit event coming so what does he mean by that he means when you take the rates from zero to six percent in a span of a year there's going to be some kind of an insolvency somewhere and these are usually the thing about these is these are usually exogenous shocks you can't predict them you can't model them once they happen like exactly like no one saw svb coming no one saw first republic bank coming because it's just the nature of how they are they're exogenous shocks so i think what michael gad is saying is there there is a credit event coming somewhere and you know he sometimes uh, encrypted tweets October or you know says some dates. So I think he's 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 advocating for hey there is a credit event coming. No one will see it coming. And once it happens, that's when we he says basically bear market is not over, right? That's bear market what is not over. Yeah. And we are just few percent below the all time below the all time high. high. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think, people in the chat who are actually watching? Uh, I'm actually very interested to see. Do you think we are in a bear market and this is just a rally? or we are actually in a new bull market. I personally think that the price action is very bullish and sentiment has been very bullish. Yeah. And people are trading stocks, uh, equities at the higher price, higher valuation, just because the sentiment is very uh, bullish. Yeah. Is there such a thing as a uh, uh, bubble? I don't know, but the, we have sentiments. You know, you, right now S&P 500 is trading around uh, 20 multiple um, of uh, earning per share. Yeah, probably uh, even more, 21. Probably even 21. Yeah. And historically in the last 40 years, I think it was trading at 16 average. So people are paying 25% premium, but that doesn't mean that it's a bubble. Just people are buying it. They say, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm buying Apple at that price. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it's worth it. Yeah, no, ac- absolutely. And, uh, you know, the same people that were <laughs> last year buying Palantir at $40, right? So, I mean, following price and following sentiment is going to cost you a lot of money, right? So you have to really have a framework. Yeah. Like, Sp- yeah. Speaking of the price, we had two big earnings uh, actually had uh, today. One mm-hmm. of them was Netflix and one of them was Tesla. Yeah. Uh, so Tesla had the earning and uh, the price actually trades 5% lower than uh, it was expecting. Yeah. Uh, the r- revenue has gone up, but they say a lot of this revenue growth is coming from uh, actually discounting the cars. So yeah. yeah, you keep the revenue up, but you're actually putting pressure on your operating margin and your yeah. gross margin. Yeah. So their their operating margin right now is around 9%. And uh, I think their gross is about 17% or something, something similar like that. So their margin, and they were like, they were known for having like SaaS-like margins, 25, 30% margins. Those are gone. So those margins are gone. What do you think uh, on the, about the Tesla? I've heard that uh, you know Tesla has an advantage of uh, other car companies is that because it's focused only on electric cars. Other car companies have to fight in different uh, uh, battlefields that they have to in internal combustion engines, diesel cars, and electric cars. And just because Tesla is focused on electric cars and can be ahead for a driverless car, you know, has the potential future. And that's why it's, uh, people are still bullish on that. Yeah, I I don't agree. I personally don't agree. Uh, You know, I mean, when you look at autonomous driving, Tesla is level three. Mercedes is already level four. 
Um, but, you know, again, the, talking about sentiment, sentiment really follows the price, not the other way around. I remember last year you and I were having a really fierce conversation and you were telling me, no, you're wrong. Tesla is a technology company, an energy company. And I was telling you, it's a car company. And then once it went to $100 a share, everyone was saying, oh, it's a car company. Now it's going back up again. Everyone's saying, oh, no, it's a technology company. And it's this, this, and it just follows the price. I think a fair value of Tesla is probably around 150, 160 bucks. Uh, it's double overvalued. And where the mark, when the market realized it, who knows? Uh, but you don't want to short it based on, based on where you think the fair value is, right? That's how you lose a lot of money. Yeah. What do you think about Netflix? Netflix also had their earning, and apparently during their earning, they said that it's a little bit too early. Their revenue grow 8% year over year, but they said it's too o- early to recognize that how much this uh, ad uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, revenue that they're in- incorporating into their plans actually can have an impact on their uh, uh, subscriptions. I think uh, Netflix after hours has gone, uh, is being, uh, uh, trading uh, much lower, like eight percent right now. It's trading lower. Eight percent down. Yeah, it's yeah. 8% down. I don't know. I mean, when it comes to Netflix, Netflix is really like a SaaS business. If you really think about it, Netflix is a SaaS business with really high cost because they're they're software as a service. You're paying a monthly fee. You're streaming. Except they they have to make all their own content. So c- content creation is really expensive, and it's. It's a it's a suck of cash because every every few years they gotta raise a bunch of debt to recreate better content, recreate better content. So if you think if you think Disney is a mature version of Netflix, mm-hmm. look at Disney and what's happening with Disney. Like they're cutting so much. They're cutting their Star Wars franchise. They're cutting their um, a lot a lot of their brands because they were getting so bloated yeah. because content creation is expensive right yeah even their parks disney are doing really bad having said that netflix uh you know at least uh you know it's uh it was 10 percent up uh in the last last month oh for sure but i i think after this drop is going to be flat in the last month year to date it's still you know it was up 61 percent netflix that's amazing now it's going to be a still 50%. how much how much away is it still from all-time high uh let me see the all-time high was somewhere around the of course after the pandemic was somewhere around 613 so it's still 50 percent down yeah still 50 yeah percent down. Yeah. yeah so this is so this is goes to show like you have to have a system right if you if people were buying at 690 and you were just following them and buying them you're still 50 percent down you're 50 percent right? down speaking yeah. of being significantly down at the carvana is a perfect example yeah, yeah carvana yeah. in the last couple of uh, days has gone a massive uh, short to squeeze on right up. i had a really bad loss on that but carvana was from the h- all highs that he had after the pandemic is down 99 percent and uh, yes, it had you know uh, squeezed back up almost fifteen hundred percent in the last couple of days, but it still needs another six hundred percent move up to get into the all-time high. Yeah. So the the key here is if you lose hundred fifty percent of your money, you need you need a hundred percent return to get back in uh, to what you had. Yeah. And that's that's just the uh, impact. Uh, of here's a here's a here's a rule of thumb I say: if, if your account goes down by fifty percent, probably need to wait four, five, six years for you to get great break even yeah. that's just how it works that's just how the math works yeah. Ari uh, speaking we don't know if it's in a bull market or bear market yeah but the question that we have here is uh, which one is better for day traders bull market or bear market sir you're the king of day trading so <laughs> I in my opinion the bear markets are better for day traders because the pockets of volatility is all across the board it's much easier yeah you know to uh, day trade in a bull market in a bear in uh, sorry in a bear, bear market, market yeah. in a bull market uh, the, the pockets of volatility are more limited because the overall market is going to go up but with less volatility. Mm. Right now, the weeks index, the, vo- the fear index, the volatility index is in all, the almost all-time low. So it yeah. you know, means that the market is going up but very uh, slowly go up. Like yeah. bulls take the stairs, bears take the you know, window down. Yeah, so what you want as a trader is really the volatility and the volume. However, uh, there is a danger of uh, the volatility is a double-edged sword. You, there is a danger of uh, you know uh, big losses in a bear market. Like I myself had the biggest loss in a bear market. So traders should be really really mindful of that. Yeah. No. I, I absolutely. I'm looking at the questions. Any other interesting question came, Andrew? That you wanna you wanna um, talk about? No. I think uh, that was. Um, um, 
Uh, so that was the question. So if you guys are watching and listening to us, we appreciate you press the like button because uh, you know the algos are really like to actually g uh, see the people are engaging. And if you have any question in the chat, we'd love to actually uh, hear that. Uh, Amar is asking why Tesla was going up today before the earning. Sometimes uh, people anticipate there's really no reason for that. I don't think there's any uh, fundamental. Yeah, no. But there is a big thing in the market that they say uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. A lot of time that Apple wants to release something, everybody buys it, and as soon as it releases it, it drops significantly. Yeah. So that's also something that uh, you got to be careful. It happened to me many, many times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, like my fiance was texting me and say buy the Mattel stock because of the Barbie movie. And I told her, sorry, Priced in, right? priced in but if you want to buy it because of the barbie movie the hedge fund manager in uh they already know that they already know that yeah. let's talk about uh i don't know how much time we got but this is an interesting one too uh benjamin graham is, is his name what's his name the the kid from uh, the youtuber uh, stephen graham is uh, it stephen, stephen graham, graham. Yeah. Stephen graham yeah so they posted his pictures and they said basically kind of a contrarian. Like by the time he gets b bearish, b get bullish. Mm -hmm. By the time he gets very bullish, get bearish. So it's four. If you can go to my screen, uh, Santiago, it's four of his. Go yeah, of course. Uh, if it's four of his most recent videos, how to use the 2023 market crash to get rich. We know 2023 has been one of the best years in the market. Yeah. And then while you regret buying a stocks in 2023, again, we knew it was one of the best uh, best years. I don't see the screen. Uh, Santiago, can you share add this screen? It's, 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 it's live. It's I live th okay. Yeah, I think it might be yeah, a few seconds delayed. delayed. Yeah. yeah. And then three months ago, he said the Fed just crashed the market again. We know market went up and now he just released a new video, how to get rich in 2023 bull market. So I think if you're a trader and you want to trade against uh, Benjamin Graham, who's really a YouTuber, it's a good time to take some profit. To take some profit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the sentiment always follows the price. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, uh, you know, when the price goes, you know, six months ago in November, December, everybody was so gloomy. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of the world. The pricing of the company is where like there is end of the board yeah and uh you know now everybody is so bullish yo the economy is solid inflation is coming down just because the price uh, is going up yeah exactly uh, same story with tesla right when it when it's going up it's the autonomous company it's the technology company when it's going down it's a car company car company and it's not yeah. worth it yeah. like the p well, should be eight. well in reality it's probably somewhere in between but most likely just a car company but uh, here's the thing it doesn't matter for investors yeah. as long as you position yourself based on uh, your uh, scope actually for investors might but for traders definitely it doesn't yeah. matter you know but if i'm a big fund manager and i want to invest in tesla these yeah. are the questions that does really matter if you yeah. want to invest 100 million dollars in tesla you have to have a really good approach on uh, where this the direction of this company is yeah, going. yeah absolutely uh, speaking of um, you know the contrarian the the sh the short Jim Cramer ETF the the ETF that does SG. the re yeah, yeah reverse of is not having a good time, AKA Jim Cramer is killing it right now. So the ETF if you can see my screen Santiago if you could put it there the ETF was twenty six dollars about three months ago now it's trading at twenty one dollar oh, so that's yeah. a thirty percent drop so that means uh, long Jim Cramer has outperformed the mar <laughs> outperformed the market. Yeah, um, that's uh, that's it. I mean, overall, having that the kind of a meme ETF was really, really funny for me. Like whatever yeah. Jim Cramer says, you go long or whatever he says, go Jim, yeah. uh, go short. And the tickers were uh, long Jim, L-G-I-M yeah. yeah. and short Jim, S-G-I-M. So this, yeah. that was really, really funny. I mean, this is the craziest part. Like people need to understand the business behind these. The folks who make this. ETFs, they're not in the business of making you money. They're in the business of making themselves rich through fees. Yeah, like, exactly. don't go as a joke, put your hard and earned money into short Jim Cramer because, oh, he's always wrong. You lose money. Don't do that. You're making the ETF creators I'm rich. amazed that people actually get liquidity into these ETFs. It's, un it's unbelievable. Like yeah. the reverse of uh, Cathy Wood yeah. and reverse of the, it's the same how, company. How's, does how's that. that do? How's Sark doing? Actually, I don't know, but I think it should probably should doing uh, uh, not great because uh, it's a short ETF essentially. 
and the short ETFs in the bull market. I don't know if they're doing well. Today it was down 1.5% in the last month. Oh yeah. It so was if down 13%. In even the last Sark, six months was 32%. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Sark went from $70, I have it in trading terminal right now, from $70 went to $30. So got caught in a third you know, in such a short amount of time. Yeah, be very careful. This, this, your money is not something to be funny about, you know, <laughs> so yeah. I'm pretty sure there's tons of people, even even probably might be in our community who's who've got stuck into this, uh, these crops, yeah, right? Yeah, never really, you gotta be really careful. Like yeah. it's just, even the name is long gym or short gym or just yeah. funny and you funny, know, yeah. I don't know why somebody really uh, get into that. Yeah, exactly. And another, you know, here's another thing, the, the Benjamin Graham that you showed, yeah. that how he actually rides uh, this the sentiment of the people like he's a big YouTuber. YouTuber. He's an entertainer. He makes so money. People, people want to know about recession. I'm gonna make a video about recession. You want to see about the collapse? I'm gonna put a thumbnail of the collapse. You know, a re uh, reset, and I just get your view and your attention, and I'm just making money from my, you know, following and advertisement revenue. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Uh, there are a few things going on. Um, I don't know how much time we got. Um, because I know our camera and our battery, we had some issues. But um, China is not doing very well. Have you have you seen some of the China China stats? I no, actually don't know exactly, uh, but uh, I I know that overall China is not really recovering as fast as uh, in the rest of the world did after pandemic. So I have in in the chart in my screen on the left hand side, Santiago. If you can go to my screen, you can see S and P 500 moved from 3800 to 45 4500. And S&P China ADR index. So these are the Chinese companies that trade in the U.S. Uh, through ADR, depository receipt. They're down by about 30%. So a massive, like massive difference between S&P and China. Would you invest in China right now? I personally would never invest in China uh, because uh, I know that uh, the numbers that come from China is not necessarily the right numbers. I know that there was lawsuits against Baba for, you know, mis, you know, uh, misaccounting behaviors or, or yeah. practices, and that's actually something that is very, very concerning. Again, as a, a small investor, a small individual investors, I have no desire to go into the uh, Chinese market because, uh, first of all, the mispractices that they do in the reporting of their numbers, plus, uh, is uh, you know, it's not a free market government can change anything over time like jack ma have you heard of jack ma for where is very, he who knows who knows where he is i mean i know he's alive and recently he's been seen but he just completely disappeared from the you know economic scene yeah. and you don't want to invest in that having said that the all institutional traders they should look into china because there is potential growth it's one of the yeah. biggest this is the biggest uh, middle class in the world and yeah. you know the growth is in there i know ray dalio is very bullish in china and yeah. uh, he has big investments in china yeah yeah i mean ray dalio has this uh uh, big cycles right and he thinks the next superpower is going to be china and he talks about it a lot and he's on tiktok by the way right yeah Dali. ray Dalio is doing a lot of content i yeah. don't know maybe his fund is doing bad and he wants to be a tiktoker right? no no i think his fund's doing great but yeah it's interesting that he's he's on tiktok um let's so the question let's get a question from it just shoot ben is saying that i have uh tesla from average of 290 after hours is uh bad uh, let, let me let, what's tesla is trading right now um uh, right now is uh, trading at uh, 279 i would personally get out of it uh, if i had this position because uh, after five percent drop i would i would doubt that tesla are going to recover that five percent nobody knows but usually after earning with you know five six percent down it's very very unlikely that price bounces back it means that even the probably tomorrow the sentiment would be more bearish but here's the thing i would tell it just shoot ben is let's say you don't sell and the stock goes up and you make money how, how are you gonna feel you got lucky right what what was your what was your system what was your stop loss what was your plan you know going into the stock prior to earning so i would like I've, I've 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 been doing this for a while now my recommendation is always take the loss and treat it as a uh, as a learning hopefully the loss is not going to be big enough and if the stock went went back up when the when the market started you can always get back in again right so you can always get back in and you know really really make your money back uh that's uh, that's my two cents yeah so that's uh uh, again, I, if I had that 279 position, I would probably get out of that. Uh, uh, but again, uh, financial advice, giving it is really hard. You have to uh, take that. 
Oh, so ju- the band is average is at 290. So uh, AI sector, PLTR, Palantir potential top after hard rejection today. Um, so what's the what's the PLTR price action? I know it has been uh, weak uh, last year. It got destroyed really last year. and But in the last six months, starting from the May, has gone up significantly from $7. Now it's trading at... Uh, uh, Eighteen dollars. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it doesn't. Here's it doesn't seem to here's be my two cents on on PLTR. If you're an option trader, if Santiago, you can go to my screen. Is you can see this Doji here, right? This topping pattern. One of the things you could do usually is you could sell some premium. So maybe at a nineteen or a twenty dollars, sell some premium, sell some calls. Okay, you make some money, use some of it, and buy some protection at like twenty one dollar. Uh, but but. Granted, do not do not take a huge size because we're in an AI mania, right? The stocks go up, uh, especially when news comes in that PLTR has a partnership with Apple. Stock could go up another 20 30%. So uh, this is probably a high probability trade. Set up this spread, but take a really small size, maybe three, four contract. Do not go more than that because look at this, this candlestick. This looks like a massive rejection here as well uh, in the red candlestick over here. But what happened? The stock went through it again, right? We just we just blew past it uh, in in less than 30 days. So if you want to play this, play it with a spread, uh, sell some calls, buy some protection, only a few contracts, and uh, let's see what happens. But again, we are in a we're in a we're in an AI mania. Don't short any AI stock. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that uh, uh, Peter Donnelly posted something very interesting. You know, if, you know, potentially you can actually show it on that. There was an article from oh, 1999 yeah. and talking about uh, the internet and uh, you know Brent Donnelly by Brent Donnelly. Yes, yeah. Peter Pe- Donnelly. It's not Peter, yeah, Brent Donnelly. <laughs> so that article in 1999 was talking about uh, the the bubble and the put, you know the craziness that goes through the internet. And uh, Brent was sharing that if you read that article and replace internet with AI, yeah. it's exactly the same. So that mania that started in 1998 went up all the way up to, it, I think March 2000, 2000 was uh, the peak of dot-com bubble. Yeah, yeah. So essentially for about almost two years after that article, that mania uh, continued before actually the bubble burst. So if you're in the AI mania that has no fundamentals, still it can go for years uh, cr- like this crazy and Nvidia can go significantly higher before actually people realize that, oh, it's really not that uh, valuable. Yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, shout out Brent Donnelly, by the way. Um, he is coming to New York. So if you're on the fence about coming to New York, definitely come check us out in New York City. It's going to be our biggest event. More than 150 traders, uh, three tours to NYSE. Even though we're sold out on the NYSE tour, there is a chance people might drop out. So come. There is probably a probability that uh, you might come to a NYSE tour. It's a higher probability than buying the Powerball uh, <laughs> ticket, you know. And it's going to be a great, great, great event. We're really, really excited. Yeah, it's amazing. So a question that is coming into the chat room that they say, what do you think the Carvana is going to do until the end of the next week? I think Carvana had a very massive up in the last six, uh, six months. It was like 750% up. Um, it, the price action today was very, very difficult. I had to be really bad loss on it, but I think it's going to probably soon exhaust uh, from this massive short squeeze. Even if someone is actually getting a squeeze, they probably get a margin call and then uh, this... Uh, massive uh, short squeeze is going to end so if you are in there to take some profit it's not a bad idea to take 25 percent to 50 percent profit and let the rest run for you but i don't see it, uh, this uh, up 60 70 percent every day they usually don't last that and uh, you know uh, short sellers start shorting it and buyers would get exhausted uh, someone asked about hood i think hood is interesting um if i want to play hood with an option i think it's breaking out um, if I wanted to play hood with an option, I would probably sell some twelve fifty or twelve dollar put, use that money and buy some August uh, end of August calls at the money or in the money calls because I think this, this stock is probably going to fifteen uh, very soon. Uh, it's just breaking out Which right one now. Which PLTR? Uh, hood. Hood. Yeah. Robin, Robin Hood. hood yeah. yeah, and I mean retail trading is really back, right? Uh, folks are back. They want to trade. Everyone's back. Uh, market is front running it. Um, this this price action. This this is a this is an uptrend bullish price action. So this is what you want to 
Yeah. Uh, this is what you want to do. I would play with options with on options. this one. Yeah. So for some, yeah. Uh, but, but here's one thing that we have to understand that about the crypto market. Crypto market seems a little bit exhausted. Uh, you know, the brick, uh, Bitcoin couldn't really go above thirty thousand dollar even after SEC ruled that uh, uh, XRP is actually not a uh, not a security. A security. Yeah. So you know that was big big news for uh, crypto market, but it really didn't. Uh, cre- at least uh, Bitcoin couldn't really break out. Uh, XRP had a better run. So uh, it seems to me that crypto market also somehow exhausted that bullish run on it. So you got to be careful. And the Mara, Mara is, uh, you know, a, a crypto miner. So yeah. it really c- it correlates with, uh, uh, with the crypto assets. There is uh, something that is very important for people to understand that uh, there is a little bit of a lack of confidence in the crypto market with collapse of FTX and uh, collapse of, uh, uh, you know, the, the SEC investigation of yeah. uh, Coinbase. So there is a big, big, uh, sorry, Binance. Uh, so there is a big... Uh, um, uh, uh, lack of confidence in in the crypto market right now yeah yeah no i mean my feeling about crypto hasn't changed i think uh you know as a technology it's been 10 years if it was really if there was any utility it should have been happening by now i mean come on guys like look at ai look at chat gbt like in one it in less than like few months it, it reached 100 million like when when it's a life-changing technology you just know it you feel it and i'm not a tech person i'm not a techie guy and i can tell you that so it's been 10 years since uh, bitcoin and all it's been good for is to take money out of retail and make a bunch of vc guys rich by icos and initial coin offering and all that jazz so uh, be better come on do better that's my that's my i mean the crypto market is is the crypto market a sustainable way of growing your money especially the big portion of your investment no i think no uh, it could be a part of your uh it could be a lottery point. ticket it could be a lottery ticket yeah, but you have to play lo- like a lottery ticket lottery you buy ticket. a five dollars lottery ticket yeah. you don't put your life investment into a lottery ticket yeah uh, i think if someone wants to be exposed to the crypto market definitely in the low one digit should be like five percent of the portfolio or you know less than ten percent of the portfolio yeah. should be in the crypto asset and definitely diversification in other uh, yeah. assets yeah and i mean it's hard to diversify it's hard to get in it's hard to diversify i mean think about it you were in fdx and you were five percent of your asset was in fdx and fdx goes under and what happened to your asset yeah. like as long as there's no custody that is holding your bitcoin uh, the cost, the custody is under the SEC rule and S- SEC regulation. You can't be sure if any of these exchanges that you have your money with on crypto they don't go under, right? Like I remember a friend of mine messaged me during the peak of crypto and he was saying this yield uh, yield farming gives me 15 percent, and I told him this is a Ponzi. There is no way. And back then rates was zero. I'm yeah. like, there is no way risk free is zero, and these guys are giving you 15 percent. Granted, he didn't put his money. And few months later, the company failed, right? Yeah. Because it's just it's it's modern day Ponzi. I know people who lost millions of dollars in yeah. uh, in a Terra stable coin. Yeah. So these are pine- and essentially is a Ponzi Ponzi scheme. You yeah. Know. People laughed at me when they said, "Okay, what's your expectation of your return?" And I said, 10 to 15 percent." They laughed at me. Yeah. And you know, it's just. Uh, you know, they're, they they were expecting like 20, 30, 40 percent return on their yeah. money. And this is nothing. No, I mean, seriously, guys, if you want to waste your money and lose your money, I'll put my PayPal here. <laughs> Just give it to <laughs> me. I'll I'll use it. I'll go buy a nice watch. I know how to use the money. Like, don't don't do not gamble your money like this. Yeah, awesome. Um, All right. So, Adi, this way, this is a, so do you want to talk about the Canada at the, uh, the last uh, uh uh, or no. I, I don't know how much time we have. Let's if you want to do this every week, then we, there's tons of stuff to talk about. Maybe we can talk about it next week uh, yeah. when we come back. Uh, but this is a new format. We want to give this a try. Uh, tell us if you like it. We can we can do stock reviews. You know, it seems like people want to see our stocks and do stock reviews. We could do that. Uh, we could answer questions, review the earnings, uh, review the companies. There's so much we could do with this format. And yeah. So one of the reasons that actually we did it today is uh, our producer uh, Adrian uh, to to get over all of this stuff. So Adrian, how's uh, how's the situation over there? Are you comfortable with changing the everything? Uh-huh. Maybe Adrian, come and let the let the folks see you uh, to the yeah, camera. Yeah, no, say hi to the, hi to the camera. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, Adrian, our new producer, guys. Uh, so if anything goes wrong, with uh, it's <laughs> his fault. If. Uh, <laughs> 
okay let's uh let's wrap it then okay well thank you so much guys if you are uh, not subscribed we appreciate you if you like and subscribe to our channel we're gonna uh we're gonna continue doing that we are aiming for three times a week for now yeah and uh if the you know it's uh it's, uh, Sean is asking prediction about the idea, IWM is the last thing. Is IWM is actually catching up with NASDAQ right now because IWM was the index that was uh, lagging. But it has caught up really well, but it still is, the, I think, more than uh, you know, 12, 13% below all-time high. So it has a little bit of a more room if it really wants all the indexes go to all-time high. So here's what I would say about um, IWM. Look, one top, two top. If it goes here, if you can see my screen, it will be three top, right? So the 200 level in this bear market has been a key area of resistance. So, you know, technical analysts quite often tell you there's no such thing as triple top. So if there's a double top. I think ICPLTR, are you talking about the IWM? Uh, I'm, I'm in my screen, I mean, I, I, IWM, I, I, yeah, IWM, okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe it's a delay on this one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you can see one top, two top at the 200 has rejected it twice the spare market through the rallies i think if we can break above the 200 this could be another run for iwm maybe aiming to go back to all-time high um a technical analysts tell you that there is no such thing as triple top so who knows if it rejects it or not yeah excellent excellent well thank you so much guys and have a good day uh thanks for tuning in ciao Go, go see that. Don't don't worry about this one, AJ. Go see over there. AJ, go, go make sure how to stop it and do the change. Do the, For what? Over there.